Today I'm going to answer a question from a student who goes by the name of John McGee. And his question is about capacitors charging, and I'll link the video he's talking about in the description and up here. And let's take a quick look at our charge circuit so we can see what his question is. So here's our basic demonstration circuit about how capacitors charge. We have a battery, we have a switch, and a resistor, and a capacitor, and Let's put another switch here. I'm probably not going to need it for this explanation, but I usually put it there for discharging the capacitor. But, okay, let's go ahead and discharge that capacitor. Make sure there's absolutely no voltage across it. There's zero volts. It's completely discharged. Okay, let's open up that and get ready to charge the capacitor. So let's say we have a 10 volt battery, and let's make this a one ohm resistor and a one farad capacitor. Why? because that will give us a time constant of one second. What that means is, once I close the switch, after one second, the voltage across my capacitor will be 63.2% of this voltage over here. That's what a time constant is. That's represented by the Greek letter tau over here, and if you want to know more about it, be sure to read the material and watch the video on capacitor charging and discharging. But that's where that comes from. The capacitor time constant, if we have one ohm and one farad, it will take one second for this voltage to reach 63.2% of that voltage. Okay, so we close the switch, and after one second, what do we have? 6.32 volts across the capacitor. Remember, the capacitor acts like an air storage tank. We push some electricity into it, we get some voltage. So an air tank, we push some air in, we get some pressure. We push more air in, we get more pressure. We push more air in, we get more pressure. And we keep putting air in, we keep getting more and more pressure until either we just can't push anymore or the tank explodes. Capacitor acts the same way with electricity. We push some electricity in, we get some voltage. Push some more in, we get some more voltage. And we keep pushing it in, that voltage gets higher and higher until either we can't push anymore because we've reached our voltage here, or we exceed the electrical strength of the capacitor and it's destroyed. Sometimes they even explode. So. After one second, we have 63.2% of that voltage because one ohm, one farad. And as we keep charging it, after two seconds, we have 8.65 volts. After three seconds, we're going to have 9.5 volts, and it just keeps climbing up there until after five seconds, we've reached 99.3 volts, and it's essentially pretty much the same as that voltage. So we're pushing current in, but it's pushing back with almost the same voltage, so almost no current is going into the capacitor at this point. Now I'm gonna change the rules just a little bit because in reality, this capacitor never really fully charges, and so it never really reaches the 10 volts. But let's just say after five seconds, what the heck, it's 10 volts. So it's fully charged, it's pushing back as hard as this is pushing in, no more current. Now the question that uh, Mr. McGee has, does the capacitor ever reach this voltage or do we still lose something across this resistor? Now there are a number of trains of thought where I can see where he can get to that question. One is simply that when we talk about resistors, a lot of people always say resistor equals voltage drop. Very important to remember, we only have a voltage drop, which means a voltage across the resistor if there is current flowing through it. So if I take a resistor and just you know, have it out in midair, don't know what else is going on around it, and if I have current going through it, so there's some resistance, there's some current, I am going to get voltage. It's going to be higher where the current goes in and lower where it comes out. So higher is represented by positive, lower is represented by negative, and so I'm going to have voltage across there. But to get that voltage, I must have current plus resistance. If I have no resistance, zero ohms, I can have all the current in the world and I'm not going to get voltage. You must have current plus resistance to get voltage. Or I can have a million ohms and zero amps of current. No current, no voltage. So you must have current plus resistance to get that voltage. So people talk about resistor, voltage drop. Resistor, voltage drop, they just always go together. But remember that voltage drop, which is simply the voltage that develops across that resistor when current goes through it, only exists if there is resistance and current. So right now, how much current do we have? Well, this capacitor is charged up 
to that voltage and it's pushing back just as hard there is no current flowing. It looks just like there's an open circuit here. In fact, it's exactly what it is. Two conductors separated by an insulator. We have an open circuit. And because of the nature of a capacitor, it has to fill up with electricity and get that voltage to push back. But uh, it becomes what it is, an open circuit. So there is no current flowing. So how much voltage do I lose across this resistor? Zero volts. So I start with 10 volts. Let's put our black lead here and take our red lead and measure our voltage, we have 10 volts there. We come across this resistor, how much current is flowing through it? Zero. So how much voltage do I have across it? Zero. So I start with 10 volts and I lose nothing. When I say there's zero volts here, that's not the absence of voltage. It simply means there's no difference between one side and the other. So this voltage is the same as that voltage. So we have plus 10 there, we have plus 10 there. So in this circumstance, we do not have any voltage drop. So the answer in this case is no. There is no voltage across this resistor because we no longer have any current flowing. But the other train of thought that can lead to that question, of course, is when current is flowing. So let's get our clutter out of the way here. So let's say this has gotten up to 6.32 volts. And so there is now current flowing through here. How much is it? It's going to be, let's see, how can I figure that out? Well, I have 6.32 volts here, 10 volts there. Where's the rest of it? Kirchhoff's voltage law says that the voltage here and the voltage here must add up to the voltage there. So if I have less than 10 volts here, I must have some voltage here. That means I must have current flowing through it and there must be resistance there, right? Otherwise, it wouldn't balance out. So I have how much voltage here? 3.68 volts. Whatever's not here must be there. So as this charges and this voltage gets higher and higher, this voltage must be getting lower and lower, isn't it? So at this point here, I have current flowing through the capacitor. Therefore, it's flowing through this resistor. It's a series circuit. Whatever current goes into one must go into the other. And so how much current do I have? Well, if you know your voltage, you divide into it. So 3.68 divided by 1 is going to equal 3.68 amps. Well, that's a lot of current, but this is just for demonstration purposes. So that's what's going on right now. 3.68 amps, 1 ohm. 1 times 3.68 gives us 3.68 volts. So now I do have voltage. So question is, do I ever have all of my voltage here or do I lose some voltage across the capacitor? In reality, no, you never reach the full voltage here. After five seconds, I'm going to have 99.3% of that voltage. So in the case of 10 volts, I'm going to have 9.93 volts. After another second, I'm going to have even more and more and more, but this will get up to 9.99999 whatever. It will never ever actually reach this 10 volts. But then how much is across my resistor here? 0 0.000000 whatever. So my voltage has become very tiny here and very big here. So in reality, there's always a tiny bit of voltage across this resistor and always a little less voltage than my 10 volts here. And of course, those two voltages will add up to my 10 volts. But I also have a very, very tiny current flowing uh, indicative of what's going on. So uh, the question is, do I have voltage across here? Now, if you're asking, does this capacitor ever fully charge up and ever have all 10 volts across it? The answer is no. If your angle is, well, I've got a resistor there, don't I have to have voltage across it? Not if there's no current flowing through it. So if I eliminate the capacitor, have an open circuit, no current, no voltage. So now whatever voltage I have here, I have no loss. I have that same voltage over here. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. 
If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.